I'm going to call the meeting to order. I ask you to please stand for the pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, regular town board meeting. The first uh, item that we have is a public hearing on the benefit assessment districts. I'll read the notice of public hearing. <clears throat> Please take notice the town board of the town of Cornwall will hold the required annual public hearings on the 11th day of October 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. Town Hall 183 Main Street, Cornwall, New York on the benefit assessment, assessment districts for 2016 in the town of Cornwall as follows. Coral Refuse District, Firthcliff Heights Sewer District, Firthcliff Sewer District, Beaver Dam Lake Sewer District, Majestic Sewer District, Hidden Glen Drainage District, Main Street Parking District, and Stone Hollow Drainage District. The town Board will, at the above date, time, and place, hear all persons interested in the subject matter hereof. Persons may appear in person or by agent. All written communications addressed to the Board must be received by the Board at or prior to the public hearings by order of the Town Board, Town of Cornwall, Renata McGee, Town Clerk. I'll just note for the, uh, the record, the Cornwall Refuse District has 39,531 units. The Firthcliff Heights Sewer District has 1,653 units. The Firthcliff Sewer District has 447 units. Beaver Dam Lake Sewer District has 1,909 units. The Majestic Sewer District has 25 units. Hidden Glen Drainage District has 14 units. The Main Street Parking District has 39 units. Stone Hollow Drainage District has 29 units. We have declared the public hearing open. I do have one short uh, letter that we got from a Michael Copeland. It says, Town of Cornwall Board, I received this notice in the mail, below in the mail. I am unable to make the public meeting due to my heart, my health, but I ask that you please do not increase the assessment of taxes for our district we're struggling as it is, and tax increase would continue to make things very difficult. Um, and actually, this is not what the benefit district hearing is for. Uh, it's for property owners to have an opportunity to address the board um, with any objections they would have or concerns they would have re with regard to the number of units or points that are assigned to their particular property. Um, uh, you know, for example, if someone had a piece of vacant land and it was assessed uh, three points uh, for sanitation and it turns out that the property is not buildable, would never be buildable, and they would come in and say to the board, there will never be any service provided to this lot. I'd like you to, you know, remove the three units from my, uh, from my property. That's what this, this hearing is for. So I'll ask if anyone from the public has any comments they'd like to make at this hearing. Again, I'll ask anyone have any comments. If not, a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Ms. Buns. Yes. Mr. Sunfield. Yes. Mr. Randazzo. Yes. The motion is kept. Okay. Next, we have approval of minutes. September 6, 2016, special meeting, and September 12, 2016, regular meeting. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? I just have one little thing. Uh, probably not a good way to start the meeting, but um, Michael, I feel that you owe this town board an apology for the things that you are saying and accusing us of and the name calling that you're doing. I just feel like the things that you're saying on your Facebook and in the paper are not true and they're misleading and this board has done more <coughs> than when two years I was on the board previous and we work together we're trying to move forward uh, we're listening to people we're working with organizations we are really trying to go in a positive direction and I feel like you don't want us to and your comments are really really disruptive to our plan for progress and the name calling and the accusations uh, i think 
you owe us an apology. I've never called anybody a name. Well, I think the flat-footed comment about the supervisor was kind of like, and not a name, but it's not nice, and saying that we're hostile, but you know, that the supervisor is, uh, you know, after Nima. Those are those are negative comments that I feel like you were incorrect, and in, I think you know you were, and I think you need to publicly tell the people that our intentions were not ill willed; they were positive actions. I never said they were ill will. I just, I have my opinion. I expect the board to be open minded and progressive and move the town along. And if, uh, if that's, if I observe that that's not happening, then I'm going to say it's not happening. I'm going to say why. And it's not uh, a matter of ill will. And I actually um, have the highest regards for everybody who sits here. However, we hit walls every now and then, and uh, you know maybe it takes a little getting used to speaking in public. Um, however, I think everything that I've said uh, expresses my view, and I'm, I don't feel any reason to apologize. I may word things differently in the future. Uh, I never intend to hurt anybody's feelings, but I do want I do want to see action. I was elected uh, to make the town respond to citizens who want to see progress, and you know I, I will do it the best I can. As we are. So All right. we, we're not doing what you did, so, and we feel you're stopping us, so you should have the same respect. We move the second for the discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Mendes? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rodessa? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda item this evening? Yes, um, Carla. Carla Castillo, uh, 69 Hasbrook Avenue. Um, this was uh, brought up by Tony Encano of the Conservation Advisory uh, Council. Um, and it's regarding item number 20, the two Mill Street um, deleted state super fund. Um, he came across some documentation that um, where the uh, uh, Mill Street was delisted and was listed as saying that now that it was uh, residential development could take place on the site. Um, and then he also um, forwarded some documentation, which I'm happy to share later, that apparently was, my understanding is that it's the uh, full-fledged report on the site, and in the last paragraph of that site, it says that the site should only be used for industrial purposes. So there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect. I'm going to share that with the board just to make sure that the board has the information. Okay, anyone else? Okay. First item on the agenda is a resolution on the to adopt the 2017 benefit assessment district rules. Whereas heretofore the town of Cornwall held public hearings on benefit assessment districts for 2017 on the following districts: Cornwall Refuse District, Firthcliff Heights Sewer District, Firthcliff Sewer District, Beaver Dam Lake Sewer District, Majestic Sewer District, Hidden Glen Drainage District, Main Street Parking District, and Stone Hollow Drainage District. And whereas after the town board reviewed all of the comments by the public, the public hearings were closed. Now, therefore, be resolved as follows. The town board does hereby adopt the 2017 benefit assessment district rules as submitted. A motion on the resolution? So moved. For a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? <coughs> yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Antazza? Yes. The motion is carried. Next item is a... Uh, the resolution on the Town of Cornwall Hazardous Materials Response Plan. Uh, this has been worked on by the Highway Superintendent. So the requirement that we have a plan in place. The plan addresses health and safety protection for the Town of Cornwall. It's prepared by the Superintendent of Highways. I read the resolution. Whereas the Town of Cornwall Highway Department employees, employs workers engaged in emergency response, and whereas OSHA 29 CRF 1910.120G requires employers and emergency responders to develop and implement emergency response plans in regards to hazardous waste material emergencies and whereas the town board has before to propose hazardous material response plan prepared by the superintendent of the town highway department 
therefore be resolved as follows. One, that the town board hereby approves and adopts the proposed hazardous material response plan. And two, that a copy of the hazardous material response plan shall be kept on file and the town clerk's office shall be made available to all employees, the representatives, and OSHA personnel. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. Motion is carried. Next is a request uh, for the uh, Moodna Madness five mile uh, plan. It's five mile running race, picturesque roads. Uh, the event is November 20th, 2016 at 11.15 a.m. Uh, benefiting country kids food pantry in Washingtonville. And uh, the only thing they indicated was some support requested at the intersection of Otterkill and Jackson where the race turns left. And at our work session, we discussed that our police chief was there. And basically, uh, if, if we can provide some barricades or whatever they need, but if they provide a volunteer, it's not a busy intersection. And rather than put a police officer there, that could easily be accommodated by the, uh, the group that's putting on the run. So I will ask for a motion to approve the event. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? I uh, just ask if there's a volunteer <coughs> conducting any traffic that an officer stops and checks on them to make sure they have everything under control. Okay. <coughs> Okay, roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bund? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andazza? Yes. Motion is carried. The uh, budget workshop meetings, uh, I completed the tentative uh, town budget, submitted it on September 30th. The board members have copies, and we are going to have our first uh, budget workshop meeting Thursday, uh, October 13th at 7 o'clock p.m. Just note that for the record. Next item is the New York State DEC consent order for modification of wastewater treatment plant. Um, our attorney, uh, Dominic Cordisco, has been in touch with the uh, DEC regarding a revised schedule for the uh, project to proceed. And I have a resolution. Um, Whereas New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and Town of Cornwall entered into an order of consent which included a schedule of compliance in connection with improvements and upgrades to the town's wastewater treatment plant. Whereas on September 9, 2016, Attorney Dominic Prudisco <coughs> wrote on behalf of the town to the regional attorney for the DEC requesting an amendment to the consent order that would modify the schedule of compliance for improvements and upgrades. And whereas in a letter dated September 19, 2016, the DEC consented to the town's request to modify the compliance schedule has provided the town with a consent order modification which expires on October 31st, 2016. That's the date to sign it by. Okay. The, the, the time is pushed out for 2018. Okay, reflecting the revised schedule. Now therefore be resolved as follows. One, that the town board hereby approves the attached consent order modification. And two, the town board authorizes the supervisor to execute the same. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Mendoza? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay. Cornwall Chambers made a request, small business Saturday shop hop. Um, they write that for the past five years, they've organized a small business Saturday shop hop of Cornwall and Cornwall and Hudson. Every year they try to add something to keep people interested and each year it continues to grow. This year, request the use of the lined out part of Bridge Street for a welcome center where shop hoppers can pick up their scorecard, shopping bag, and grab a quick snack. Snacks will be provided by Greater Cornwall Chamber of Commerce members. Welcome center will be available from 10 a.m. to noon. So request the use of the area from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for setup and cleanup. And I think the, uh, the only question that we had on that, which I talked to him, was the parking for both hazards and for Clark Associates to make sure that they're aware of it and so that uh, it won't create a problem for them getting in and out of their parking spaces there off of uh, Bridge Street. So is there a motion to approve the, uh, the event? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? So Roll call. Do we know if they communicated with hazards <coughs> and Clark Associates? The chief said that they, they would take care of that and they didn't see that as a problem. Okay. okay. Is it Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Ms. Bunt? Um, yeah, I do. They did do something like that last year, but they did it across the street. Okay. 
That was a yes, ma'am? Yes. Okay, Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Adez? Yes, the motion is carried. Next is a second request from the Cornwall Chamber for holiday activities. Uh, with the request to decorate Main Street, Hudson Street for the fall with corn stalks and ribbons, which are out and look very nice, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, Friday, October 17th, leaving them up till November 27th when they begin decorating for Christmas. They'd like to use the apron on Bridge Street for Halloween, October 29th for refreshments. We would like to host a costume parade for children and pets that will coincide with the Halloween window painting. The event will go from 1 to 4 with the parade happening at 3 p.m. starting in front of the Verizon building. On the sidewalk down to Willow Avenue, where it will cross and come back up Main Street to Bridge Street, patio for prizes and refreshments. Three prizes will be awarded to children and three to pets along with holiday treats. Trick-or-treating will be from one to three from Main Street businesses as well as other chamber businesses that want to set up tables and participate. For the holiday tree line, we'd like to use the apron on Bridge Street to set up a Santa land to act as a second activity to entertain children along with the horse-drawn carriages. We'd use this area from noon until after the tree lighting is over. Sincerely, Eileen Hartman. For the motion to approve the events? So moved. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rangdes? Yes, motion is carried. I have a request from the Lions Club ready for permission for the Cornwall Lions Club to sell our wreaths and town hall property similar to the farm, farmer's market selling their products on Wednesdays. We would be selling wreaths for a total of four weekends, last weekend in November and the first three weekends in December. For years we sold wreaths on Main Street, but the proceeds have been disappointing for all the work that goes into the project. I believe that much of the problem has to do with limited parking along Main Street. People see us but cannot find a space to park comfortably to do so. As you know, the Cornwall Lions Club is very active in the community. Last year we donated more than $23,000 to charities and organizations in keeping with our motto, we serve. Of course, in order to give away money, we must first make it. Selling the wreaths at Christmas time is, the only, is only one of several fundraisers that we conduct annually. Hopefully, however, by changing the venue for our wreath sales this year, we'll be more financially successful with this endeavor. Very much appreciate bringing the request to the town board. For giving permission to use the town hall property, selling the wreaths, the Lions Club provide a certificate of insurance name to the town as additional insured. The area will be left clean of all debris. Uh, in addition, uh, when the farmer's market for the winter, um, hopefully that's going to go forward. On this Saturday, if there is a Saturday when the market is open, they also would like to be outside of the farmer's market and also sell the wreaths there. So, is there a motion to approve, approve the request? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Ms. Mr. Randazza? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, another letter from the Lions Club. Uh, I met with uh, Peter Brandt and Phil Cameron, uh, who's the co-chair, and we met up at the uh, uh, circle at the 9-11 memorial and the EMS uh, memorial. And what they'd like to do is, uh, in honor of uh, the first responders and 9-11 victims, uh, the Lions Club would like to uh, have a, a means of being able to uh, fly their flag when, during the year on holidays, they put flags up uh, on the businesses uh, down Main Street and through the area, throughout the town. So what we decided was just allowing them to put a sleeve in the ground in the middle of the plantings where they could put the flag in uh, for the day and then take it out at the end of the day it would work fine and you know, you wouldn't even notice that the, the sleeve is there. So just a approval to uh, authorize them to install the sleeve and use the, uh, that sleeve for flying the flag on those holidays. So moved. Second. Moved, second, discussion, roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes, motion is carried. I have a letter from Neil Wilkinson, Supervisor Randazzo, board members, please accept this letter as a request for approval from Lions Fall Harvest Race to be held on Sunday, November 13, 2016 at 8.30 a.m. at Storm King Engine Company, number 2, 233 Hudson Street, Cornwall and Hudson. It's been a popular community-driven event in Cornwall for over the past 10 years. I will advise Chief Hazard and Highway Superintendent Eugene Conley, please see the attached map of the 5K and 10K course. Insurance will be provided by the Lions Club. Uh, and they submitted their paperwork for it, and I think they also would like to use the parking lot at Town Hall. Uh, is there a motion to approve the event? So moved. Second. Moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. 
Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Nadez? Yes, the motion is carried. Next, I received a letter from Congressman Maloney uh, regarding the uh, proposal before the uh, U.S. Coast Guard regarding uh, barge anchorages at 10 proposed sites at the Hudson River. Uh, the uh, Congressman indicates that uh, there's been a 90-day extension for public comment, and he's asked us to uh, provide comment on this matter. I do have a letter I'd like to read that will be sent to uh, the Coast Guard. The Town of Cornwall sincerely thanks the U.S. Coast Guard for the opportunity to comment on this matter. The Town submits this comment to express its concerns about this proposed rule. The Town of Cornwall is concerned about the negative impacts that the proposed rule will have on its and other Hudson River communities, health and safety, environment, and economy. <coughs> health and safety risks. The proposed rule and increased barge anchorage grounds on the Hudson River present a high risk of health and safety concerns to communities and those who use the Hudson River for recreation and livelihood. The increased anchorage capacity will lead to increased traffic on the Hudson River of shipments such as crude oil and ethanol. Increased oil traffic brings a greater risk of oil spills and water contamination. This causes a grave concern to communities drinking water supply. Hudson River not only provides drinking water for several communities along the river, but is also part of an extensive water system that connects to surface and groundwater supplies throughout the region. An increase in anchorage grounds will foster an increased risk of devastating effects on the drinking water supply of the densely populated Hudson Valley region. Also, increased traffic and anchorage grounds pose a risk to boaters and waterfront infrastructure resulting from unanchored drifting barges. This has been the case with the latest construction of the Tappan Zee Bridge. Increased barge presence around the bridge project has resulted in several incidents of barges coming unanchored and drifting, even with routine safety and security checks. These occurrences and risks will become more likely with the proposed substantial increase in barge travel and anchorage throughout the Hudson River. Environmental risks. As stated above, the increase in anchorage grounds will increase the risk of oil spills and water contamination. Spills and contamination would wreak havoc on the wildlife and plant life that heavily rely on the Hudson River. Over the years, there's been a major effort by New York State, local communities, and community organizations to clean up and restore the natural habitat that is the Hudson River. Even though the effort has been vast and progress has been made, the Hudson is still plagued by harmful conditions. One oil spill or water contamination could undo several years and millions of dollars worth of work and return the Hudson to its former, more dangerous condition. The Hudson River is also home to several feder federally endangered species, including the Atlantic sturgeon. Any threat to the river is a threat to these endangered species who call the Hudson River their home. Not only would the endangered species suffer from oil spills and water contamination, but anchoring could also damage vital sturgeon habitat. Sturgeons rely on riverbeds for breeding and feeding needs. Increased anchorage could damage and destroy vital riverbeds, further harming the species. Economic risks. Hudson Valley Commerce relies heavily on its tourism industry. This industry relies on the serene, picturesque, and natural qualities that the Hudson River provides. Increased barge travel and anchoring of ships would greatly diminish the attractive characteristics that the Hudson River encompasses. This quality reduction could negatively impact the region's tourism industry and take away financial resources from local and regional business that benefit from and rely on such industry. Also, several communities and private landowners along the Hudson River have invested money and effort into developing their waterfront areas. Waterfront developments rely on the peaceful natural qualities of the Hudson River. Increased anchorage along the river would result in noise and light pollution from barges and diminish aesthetic, aesthetic qualities the river provides. Such effects could impact waterfront property and their values, causing investments to go fruitless and reduce values. Further, an oil spill or water contamination would make waterfront areas dangerous and unsightly, further affecting the waterfront commerce and populations. In conclusion, the proposed rule allowing additional anchorage grounds along the Hudson River poses substantial risks to the health and safety, environment, and economy of many local communities, including the town of Cornwall. The U.S. Coast Guard is urged to fully consider the negative impacts of these anchorage grounds and withdraw the proposed rule. The town of Cornwall thanks you for your attention to the concerns of its community members and neighboring communities. I'd like to have a motion just authorizing this letter be sent to the Coast Guard to express our views on their proposal. So moved. Second. Move, second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Rizzo? Yes. Mr. Nadez? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randez? Yes. The motion is carried. The uh, Pilgrim Pipeline, we go from the waterfront to our western borders, 
And we know we've been dealing with the bomb trains along the West Shore uh, Railroad, and it seems endless, and we really have our, our challenges. Um, fortunately, the uh, DEC and New York State Thruway Authority, which are lead agencies on the Pilgrim Pipeline proposal, have issued a positive declaration, which means that there'll be a, a complete environmental review, uh, which will give us opportunities to at least uh, speak out and express our concerns with this, uh, this proposal from the DEC. Um, <coughs> I, I looked at, uh, when you, you look through the, uh, the positive declaration, and uh, it really, it's, it's rather eye-opening uh, when it includes uh, some of the detail that they, they provide. And you really have to sit back and say, with these potential impacts, why are they even considering a project like this? Jeopardizing our residents and, and jeopardizing our communities. Um, it just really doesn't make any sense today when you, uh, you look at what's going on in the, uh, the energy, energy, energy uh, field where we're looking to go to uh, other types of energy and get away from crude oil. But the fact that, just to emphasize that, uh, it, it indicates the main pipelines would each be up to 20 inches in diameter and would be capable of transporting the equivalent of 200,000 barrels of oil per day. And you multiply that out, and that comes to about 8.5 million gallons of uh, crude oil or uh, product in the course of the day. And I, I cited, uh, I spoke at uh, the town of New Windsor, uh, there was a meeting on Pilgrim Pipeline, and just cited, for example, the um, the, the tanker that uh, leaked on the uh, throughway, which in a rough estimate contained maybe 9,000 gallons uh, of product, and it closed the throughway down for 12 hours. I, I mean, can we imagine if this pipeline, if there's a breach, and hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil spill out into the New York State throughway, in, into our rivers and streams, and our properties, and our aquifers? I mean, it, it would be uh, of such devastating proportions that it would be decades before any community would recover from that kind of a, of a, of a loss. And I think, uh, again, you, you just look at it in terms of the, the impact that it can have. And they even, uh, there's even concern about once they, if they let that Pilgrim pipeline go in, what impact does that have on the throughway and their ability to maintain the throughway and eventually expand in areas where they would have to expand. So I think there's a real there's a real fight on our hands to, uh, to really convince the DEC and uh, the Thruway Authority that this is the wrong project at the wrong time and it has just no business uh, being even considered. And, and to that end, I mean, what I'm going to do, I've talked to some of my counterparts in surrounding communities, I'm going to write a letter to uh, Governor Cuomo and I'm going to invite him down to a town hall meeting to come down here and face his constituents and be able to explain to us why we should be put at risk for a project that is strictly a private venture and provides absolutely not one single benefit to our communities. And I think he owes us a, an explanation, and I think that he has to understand that this goes beyond just money for the New York State Thruway Authority and for the state of New York. This really is a threat to our complete environment and our way of living. So I am going to be sending a letter off to him to invite him down. I will hope that he will take us up on that. This goes well beyond the town of Cornwall, and I think he owes us at an absolute minimum to come down and address the communities as to why he has not stepped in and just said, no, we are not going to allow any Pilgrim pipeline to go down the New York State Thruway. So I do have a resolution that uh, I want to uh, have the board approve regarding the, the time frame for comment. Uh, to whereas Pilgrim Pipeline Holdings LLC has proposed to construct two pipelines carrying crude oil and refined petroleum products between Albany, New York, and Linden, New Jersey, cutting through the town of Cornwall and 30 other towns, cities, and villages in the Hudson Valley, Catskill region, and capital area. And whereas the town of Cornwall had previously adopted a resolution requesting a minimum 90-day public comment period following the re release of a draft scoping document, and therefore be resolved as follows, that one, that the town board of town of Cornwall has a potentially involved agency requesting the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation the New York State Thruway Authority as co-lead agencies to provide an additional 90-day public comment period, and two, that a copy of this resolution be sent to New York State DEC Commissioner Basil Sagos, New York State Thruway Authority Acting Executive Director Bill Finch, and Governor Andrew Cuomo. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. 
Is there a second? Discussion? Uh, well, the suggestion I would have is that you try to coordinate with the surrounding supervisors and uh, mayors and try to get them to join you in that petition to the governor. They, they are. I've already talked to many of them. I'll be talking to a few more. And so they are re regional. They're all on board. That's why I think having them come down, it's that it goes well beyond the town of Cornwall. And the other supervisor and mayors of the community recognize that the jeopardy that we would be placed in if this project ever becomes a reality. So they're all willing to make that request? To the Absolutely. They, they would love to see the governor come down in our neck of the woods mm -hmm. and just see what the uh, what the risk would be. So do, do we get a motion? Do we have a second? Do we have a discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzi? Yes. The motion is carried. At our work session, we talked about uh, the uh, inflow and infiltration of the uh, into our Cornwall uh, sewer collection system, and that we're working uh, with the DEC or under the DEC actually um, to try to uh, evaluate the system and, and take corrective action. And one of the things that Russ Budd, who has been working with us on the upgrades to the Cornwall sewer plant, has indicated that. Uh, there could be uh, either grant money available or low interest loans that would assist the town with this, uh, this type of work going forward. Um, in addition, uh, Russ has stated that uh, we should be moving forward with the paperwork and request now to work with uh, the EFC on funding or any grants for the second phase of the uh, upgrade to the Cornwall sewer plant, which is probably five years out but if we do that now and try to tie that in with the current project that we have, he, he believes that we'll be, uh, it'll make us more qualified to receive more assistance in terms of either grants or uh, low cost, uh, low interest loans to be able to move forward with the second phase of the project. So I have a resolution for the board. <clears throat> Whereas New York State Water Grant Program administered by uh, New York State EFC offers grants which could be potential funding for the proposed work to mitigate infiltration and inflow in the Cornwall Sewer District, and whereas the town's consultant, Russ Budd, has recommended the town initiate the necessary steps to apply for said grant next year. And whereas the first step in the process would be for the town board to authorize the town's consulting engineers, McGowie, Hazard, Etzel, to prepare an engineering report for the proposed I&I &I work to include work on the digesters. Now, therefore, it be resolved as follows. The town board hereby authorizes McGowie Hazard Nestle to submit his proposal for preparation of an engineering report for the proposed I and I work, including work on the digesters for the Cornwall Sewer District. Is there a motion on the resolution? So move. Second. Move, second, discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Next item is we've received a letter from AT&T, uh, American Cellular Corporation. So land lease extension, it says notice of intent to extend the lease. Land lease agreement, July 10, 20, 2006, buying between American Cellular Corporation and Town of Cornwall. And what they're indicating is, please accept this letter as written, notification of the American Cellular Corp doing business as new, singular, wireless, is extending the term of this lease for an additional five-year term from November 10, 2016 through November 9, 2021, signed by Lawrence Rose. And we just want to note that for the record because it's an automatic uh, scene. Correct? Yes. It's, it's an automatic extension. <clears throat> I have a memo from Chief Hazard regarding No Shave November. Town of Cornwall Police Department is looking to participate in No Shave November to raise cancer awareness. I'm requesting the town board allow me to suspend the general order that requires officers to be clean shaven for the month of November. Officers who elect to participate would be required to make a monetary donation of $20 to the American Cancer Society. Participating officer would need would still need to keep all facial hair neatly trimmed, long, stringy beards would not be permitted. On December 1st, normal grooming standards would be back in effect. And respectfully submitted, Chief Todd Hazard. Is there a motion to approve the Chief's request? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Move, second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Next item I have, uh, it's a resolution also that I will read. It's regarding the um, Cornwall Park townhouses. They filed a tax certiorari um, action against the town. And our attorney uh, out of uh, Hacker Murphy has been uh, handling this. 
and through negotiated settlement, uh, what they're uh, recommending is that the town accept the uh, agreement. And what it does is there, there are three years involved, 2014-15, uh, 15-16, and 16-17. And um, in 2004 is the last assessment that was done. It was four million eight hundred fifty thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, and the assessed value that uh, the three years that they're arguing for had been set at five million six hundred ninety-two thousand one hundred twenty-six dollars. So, in the agreement, uh, the estimated new assessment uh, valuation will be five million forty-five thousand nine hundred ninety thousand. Uh, so that's slightly more than what we had in 2004. And I think given the fact that we're, we are in the revaluation and hopefully we will have a new role uh, as a result of the reval uh, for May 1st, then uh, I would certainly recommend that we, we move forward with this. I have a resolution, whereas heretofore Cornwall Town Park Houses LLC filed petitions under Real Property Tax Law Article 7 in New York State Supreme Court, Orange County, New York, challenging the Real Property Tax Assessment for its property located in the town of Cornwall more fully described on the next schedule prepared by E. Stewart Jones Hacker Murphy, LLP Special Counsel. Whereas the town has received the attached consent order and judgment set only above for assessment years 2014, 15, 16, whereas it's in the best interest of the town to settle this matter and to therefore be resolved as follows. The town Board hereby authorizes Special Counsel to uh, the town to enter into and execute the consent order and judgment on behalf of the town for 2014, 15, and 16 assessments for CPT, all in accordance with the next schedule. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rendez? Yes. The motion is carried. <clears throat> I have a memo from uh, our highway superintendent uh, authorization to purchase a uh, Boss 10 foot snow plow assembled with snow deflector from RTS Truck Center. So I will be installed on a 2010 F550. This truck is used primarily for Mine Hill Road. Purchase price $6,155. Two additional quotes were received, and he's recommended that this uh, be approved. Funds are available in the uh, highway appropriation. Is there a motion on the uh, authorization purchase? Second. Is there a second? Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rendezvous? Yes. Motion is carried. Next on the COVAC contract, uh, the town board has, uh, with COVAC, has extended the contract with them uh, on a couple month period. Uh, this past month, uh, Councilwoman Bunt and I met with COVAC and uh, we had presented the uh, contract that the town board has put together and proposed to them, which would allow COVAC to go out on their own. Uh, separate from the town, but providing the ambulance service to the town as of June 1st. Um, at this time, COVAC is reviewing the, uh, the contract. So uh, the current extension we have, I think, uh, is extended to November 1st. So I have a resolution that will extend the, uh, the contract for uh, another two months. So whereas heretofore the town has established a Cornwall Ambulance District, which incorporates substantially all of the unincorporated area of the town as well as the village of Cornwall Hudson. Whereas the Cornwall Volunteer Ambulance Corps is willing to operate ambulance vehicles and provide pre-hospital emergency medical service within the ambulance district and is also willing to enter into a contract for provision of such services within the town's ambulance district. And whereas the 2013 contract between the parties was extended to November 1st, 2016. And whereas it is appropriate for the town on behalf of the ambulance district and COVAC to send the contract for the provision of the above services from November 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016, while a new long-term contract is negotiated. And therefore, be resolved as follows, that the town board hereby extends the contract between the MS District and COVAC from November 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2016. Is there a motion on the resolution? <coughs> second. Second. Move to second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Uh, Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzi? Yes. Motion is carried. Next, I have a, uh, we're looking at the uh, workers' compensation uh, insurance coverage uh, renewals coming up. And uh, I have a letter from uh, William A. Smith. It's 
Mr. William A. Smith would be interested in representing the town of Cornwall as broker for your workers' compensation coverage through PERMA as of 1-1-2017 renewal. Though the customary commission provided by brokers, the brokers by PERMA is 5%, would be willing to accept 2.5%. You choose our agency as broker. As residents of the town of Cornwall, we would be very happy to pass along the savings to the town taxpayers. Please let me know if the town board would be interested in working with William A. Smith. Um, sincerely, Kathy <coughs> Smith McCarty. <coughs> I had a discussion with PERMA. They're working on our renewal, plus we are looking at other markets for the, uh, the workers' comp. And I think pretty much the way it is, is if we don't have a broker, we still would pay whatever the premium is going to be. Uh, if we have a broker, that broker gets 5%. But in my discussion with PERMA is if we do have a broker, which we currently have a broker now, but if we have a broker, and negotiate with them a lower uh, premium or uh, payment to them, broker's fee, commission, commission. Uh, then we can share in that. So I've uh, talked to Smith, they're willing to accept two and a half percent. So if we do go with PERMA, uh, the town will actually uh, re receive the benefit of a two and a half percent reduction from whatever the, uh, the premium would be for 2017. So it's like I have a motion that would uh, designate William A. Smith. Uh, for uh, broker uh, to deal with uh, perm and the workers' comp coverage. So, there's a second. Okay. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Russell. <coughs> yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Ms. Bunt. Yes. Mr. Summerfield. Yes. Mr. Andes. Yes. The motion is carried. And item number 20, which Carla had commented on, uh, we did receive the notice from the DEC State Superfund site on. Uh, Mill Street, Cornwall, is now deleted from the Registry of Contaminated Sites. So we'll just note that for the record. Your personnel. Uh, I'm happy to enter entertain the name of Hector Torres as our fifth member of the Senior Advisory Committee. Would you like to make that motion? <laughs> I will make that motion for Hector Torres to be our fifth member of the Senior Advisory Committee. Is there a second? Second. I know everybody wants to sec head for yeah. the actor. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call vote. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes. The motion is carried. I have a memo from uh, Chief Hazard regarding part time dispatcher. Re respectfully request the town consider hiring Douglas de Blasi as a part time dispatcher at the prevailing rate of $16.47 per hour. Douglas de Blasi is currently re reported as a part-time dispatcher in neighboring agency is very familiar with dispatching procedures. Is there a motion to appoint? Move. Second. Move and second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes. Motion is carried. Committee reports? Councilwoman Bunt? Okay, I have to move um, the planning department first. Um, permits issue 22. CCs 11, COs 4, on-site inspections 49, complaints investigated 3, uh, one stop work order, 20 fire inspections, 15, 14 signs removed, $5,191 for permit fees, $3,900 for municipal searches, and projects open planning board 7, zoning board and for the seniors, the um, Senior Advisory Committee has really taken off. They're very active. They're meeting weekly. Um, they have a lot of good ideas they're coming up with. They've met with Valerie. Um, I think they're going to meet with um, Karen so they don't cross over on certain things. But they want to... Um, really provide programs to get the seniors out and use Munger more and appreciate the building for what it is. Um, and they're targeting the men. <laughs> so, and believe it or not, Betty wants poker games. <laughs> so that, that's a good thing. And Kovac, um, I don't have the number of calls for Kovac, but um, as you said, we are, and they do meet tonight, so I'm here. Um, we are working on that with them. Okay. And that's it. 
Councilor Summerfield. Uh, the Cornwall Advisory Committee met last Wednesday. They're planning their annual fall highway cleanup of Route 218. <coughs> CAC uh, adopted a two-mile stretch of the Storm King Scenic Highway back in 2008 and coordinates an annual spring and autumn cleanup. Uh, the spring cleanup was canceled due to the closing of the highway at the time. Um, the date is October 23rd. Um, and they'll be notifying uh, Ken Cashman of the details uh, to uh, announce it uh, to increase the number of volunteers uh, that participate. Uh, CAC also discussed how they can contribute to the town's letter and position regarding the Portland pipeline um, in re as regards the uh, actual um, resources inventory of the town and how that may be impacted. Uh, on September 21, uh, CAC met with Lily Grove, CAC, uh, along with Supervisor Dick, Van, uh, Dick Randazzo, Mayor Brendan Coyne, as well as the Orange County Water Authority and the Hudson River Estuary Program to discuss natural in resources inventory of the region. Uh, the study and inventory is being conducted through a grant and has been the number one goal of the CAC as knowledge of rare and endangered plants and species as well as defining uniquely environmentally sensitive areas are important for both our environment as well as to protect against uh, intrusive development. And as noted by Carla Castillo, uh, there is also questions regarding the status of Majestic Weaving's uh, property um, given the removal of the Superfund list, whether there in fact is allowed uh, residential uh, use for that site. Uh, October 21st is the ribbon cutting and the ecology stroll at Black Rock Forest. The Black Rock Forest Consortium is pleased to welcome New York State Parks Commissioner Rose Harvey for a press conference and ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony in celebration of the new ADA compliant visitor access pathway on Friday, October 21st at 10 a.m. Join us as we celebrate the forest's first wheelchair and stroller friendly pathway and its scenic views of the Schwanagunk and Catskill mountain ranges. The Economic Advisory Committee did not meet uh, this past Wednesday, uh, Thursday due to uh, the Hoboken train crash. Several members were unable to attend. Uh, however, they did participate in the Cornwall Public Library's community conversation series, which focused on economic development in Cornwall. It was attended by local town representatives, including Supervisor Randazzo, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Coyne, Peter Russell, myself, business owners, educators, community volunteers, and interested, interested citizens. Uh, there was great dialogue, key issues were addressed, and uh, many concerns were raised about the direction that Cornwall was going. Um, it, was, it was overall a, a very good discussion, and we look forward to participating uh, again in another community conversation. That's it. Okay. I do want to note one thing for the record. Um, uh, obviously, we've adopted the mission statement for Economic Development Advisory Committee. Consider it an extremely important committee that can uh, really help uh, produce uh, some real benefits for the community. Uh, and I, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the liaison to the Economic Development uh, Advisory Committee. Michael, I'll be the liaison working with the committee and reporting to the town board on their activities. Uh, I think the fact that I'm in town hall just about every day and uh, can help them with resources and with some of the ideas that they have and trying to provide input um, that will help them uh, be able to move forward. So uh, we'll just note that for the record and I'll have the report uh, next month from the uh, economic development. Councilman Russell. Uh, recreation, boys basketball signups uh, beginning uh, tomorrow, October 12th and run through Friday, uh, October 21st. It's $65 per player and is open from, uh, from first grade students all the way through seventh grade. Uh, league runs from November through March of 2017 and play uh, locations will be at Lee Road, uh, COH Elementary, and at the middle school. Also, their uh, West Point holiday concert followed by a dinner at Munger Cottage. This is for the seniors, uh, Sunday, December 4th. It's $5 per Cornwall senior, and non-resident seniors uh, can begin to register on November 22nd. 
So I'm, I believe that Cornwall seniors can sign up now for five dollars, and then they'll, later on they'll open up to non-resident seniors. It's a 11:15 departure time from Munger Cottage. That again is on Sunday, December 4th. For the police department. Uh, for September 2016, there were 748 calls for service. Uh, over 9,063 miles of patrol were driven. There were 44 motor vehicle accidents reported. 23 alarms were reported, both residential and business combined. Uh, 19 ambulance requests, 16 animal complaints, 13 disabled vehicles. Uh, 26 suspicious vehicle or persons, unknown if any of those are clowns. Uh, <laughs> six house checks and 17 assists of other agencies. There's nothing else to report from the police department. And as far as uh, sewer, for sure road, uh, all uh, parameters, measured parameters within permit, list, uh, permit limits. And also there was some routine maintenance and other um, routine uh, items that were done as part of maintenance. And then for uh, First Cliff, also all measured parameters within uh, permit limits. And then one other thing from the farmer's market, uh, the proposed hours for the, I don't know, did you get a copy of this, the proposed I hours for, I just got for the winter? I did. So I'm going to work on this now or during the workshop? Well, I think just some indication probably that uh, we're, we are planning on having the winter market. Uh, and just sort of we'll be putting further information out on more specific as to when uh, the hours. I know there's some suggestions on hours and so forth. Exactly. Uh, and I assume this was done in concert with vendors and availability and so forth. But yes. I think just to, to state that we're going to have a, uh, the outdoor market probably in, it'll be uh, in that time frame from November 1st to... November 1st through May 15th. Still on Saturdays? Uh, that's to be worked out. This is the proposal from the farmers market manager, and we have to work out the particulars. But again, it's proposed to run from November 1st through May 15th. Okay. And we just have to work out exactly what the schedule will, will be. Mm -hmm. And one other thing from the farmers market is uh, Wednesday, October 12th, and also on Wednesday, October 19th, the Hudson Valley Seafood Company will be uh, joining our vendors mm -hmm. at our farmers market. Yeah, is that only for those two weeks? Uh, this is the announcement that I have. If there's going to be anything further, I'll make sure I get that out there. Could be a draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, the Hudson Valley Seafood Company on October 12th and also on October 19th. And uh, end of committee reports. Councilman, yes? Uh, the assessor's office is receiving uh, the return data mailers. Uh, signed by uh, homeowners and processing any information other than uh, what was on the, the original data mailers in the form of homeowners uh, updating their properties themselves. And uh, we are still planning and hoping for a spring roll. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the highway department, the highway and sanitation, uh, for the month, sweep, sweeping and cleaning basins town-wide, basin rebuilding various locations, uh, weed eating and roadside uh, mowing town and country. You've probably seen some of our employees out with the, with the weed eaters. Uh, place barricades for various events at the pond, clean Main Street, Bridge Street area for fall festival, topsoil and seed first part of a rain garden project. Uh, replace drainage pipe Maple Street, remove loose stone, sign, uh, loose stone signs town-wide. That's from the oil and chip paving project. Uh, hot patch work townwide, clean lower section of old Route 32, road surface with blower, dug out drainage ditches to help water flow. Work with tree crew, removing hazardous trees in the town right of ways. Uh, cleaned up large tree with help of uh, uh, Central Hudson on Maple Street. Help sanitation department is needed, brush trimming, site distance. Clearing uh, Clarkwood Drive and general maintenance on all equipment, including Sanders for winter. Um, they're also looking into the possibility of having another electronics recycling uh, event. Um, if it is scheduled, uh, the town town residents will be notified when and where. Hopefully, you know the plan is to have another one before winter if it all works out. Okay. I, I do want to emphasize, just following up on the period of the, the reval, is 
Uh, with the da data mailers that are going out, it really is important. It's, it's the opportunity for the residents to look that over. And if they find any discrepancies <coughs> on what's on a data mailer, uh, as far as detail of the house, uh, to get back in touch, get the form sent in so that they can be followed up with the assessor's office. Because our hope, of course, is having a, a a, a new role that comes out that's as accurate as can be and one of the most important things is having the, the data that's in it to be correct. So this is the homeowner's opportunity to take a look at that firsthand and provide that input to the assessor's office. Okay, I now uh, ask for motion on warrant number 10. Second. For a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment? Yes. Could I come forward and give a letter? Is it yes. Are you going to bring a little bit of time to help? Yes. I'm glad you have this. regarding the town evaluation, I was disappointed with a reserved comment in the praise given to the department within the town government for working so hard this year. My question to you as a town board, what has been going on for the past 17 years? As I try to grasp an understanding of how this neglect could happen and express concern in going forward, I looked on the Orange County Real Property website to determine how many properties there are in Cornwall. The number of properties posted on the site was 4,912. Looking at the table below, based on the number, I have constructed a data table to determine the number of properties the assessor's office <clears throat> could examine and update in order to avoid the gaps in assessments on all properties and avoid, avoid spot or selective assessments, which the town has been found guilty of and has spent a great deal of taxpayer dollars on litigations and outside appraisals. I base my numbers on an annual 45-week schedule. So if they did it for one year, they would have to do 21.83 properties per day. Five years, 4.366 properties per day. 10 years, 2.183 properties. My question as a taxpayer is what system will be put in place in order to keep all properties current in order to promote an environment of consistency and equality for all property members. I don't know if the town board has looked at the appraisal that your um, independent um, appraiser has done. He is $100,000 under your assessor's fair market value. 100000 What are you talking about? Well, we, you had, um, on my home, we had to do an Oh, on your home? Oh, yeah, I'm on sorry. my home. You lost me, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. shaking because I see that you settled one, and again, I'm sitting here hanging on the wind. And it's, it's just not right. I'm an individual person. I'm paying $10,000 more a year in taxes than I should be. The Cornwall Golf Course that was sold, sold for $500,000. My fair market value is $500,000. $76,000. So my house is more valuable than the golf course. And the sad thing is, you're all very nice people, right? And I've enjoyed having conversations with each of you. But I want to know, are you reading these reports? You're losing a lot of money on these appraisals, and I know he was doing a few of them. I'm looking at this, I'm sure this is over $1,000. And I know, Mr. Rendez, you had said to me, you know, you're not getting very much, you know, revenue for doing, you know, from the appraisals, the assessments. Why are we doing this? Is this really financially prudent? And I, I don't know why there isn't a law to require all municipalities to do it at least 
once every five years. It's just not right. And it's not being a very good neighbor when new people move into the community and they're assessed much higher than everyone. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, Nancy. Nancy Bryan, 80.3 Avenue. Um, I, I was quite dismayed when um, we received our uh, assessment information in the mail on Saturday. Um, and I dropped off to the assessor's office today um, the corrections. And in a matter of an hour, just speaking to a couple of people, not even like soliciting information, um, they, ha they had similar issues with, and one thing was bathrooms and, and too many bathrooms. And the same thing happened with a couple of other people. Um, there were so many things wrong with what I felt was wrong, my husband felt was wrong with what we received. Um, it concerns me that, um, that this would happen. In speaking with the building department, like I was kind of curious as to whether those two offices communicate. And, and yes, the building department said that they do send things over. So if that's the case, I really don't understand why the assessor's office has no idea how many bathrooms I have in my house or why would they think that a, a 280 square foot cottage actually contains a, a bedroom when there is none and there never has been one and the building department had all those plans back years ago when the prior owners had them and went to the assessors. There's a lot of things that um, the house has never had public water but since it was built in 1811 but it states that we're on public water. I, there's too many things that didn't require coming into the property that are wrong, that I truly hope that this isn't um, bigger and worse than, and I appreciate this being done, but I don't understand why there's so many mistakes already. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Nancy. That, that, obviously, that's one of the reasons why the nose is so important. And I can't speak about going you know, back, but going forward, if you bring those points out to the assessor's office and things can be done inside or means another field visit, that's the whole purpose of the data mailers to really confirm information and, and make sure that the information is correct. So that when they go to the computer modeling and neighborhoods and everything else, that you know we hope that we come out with, uh, with accurate estimates across the board. So I, I thank you for that. Anyone else? Yes, Carla. Um, so I just want to thank uh, you, Supervisor, for your leadership. On, um, on the anchorage sites and on the pipeline and as well as the support of the board because this you obviously are um, really have our uh, the best interests of the community and um, your partnerships with the surrounding municipalities the best interests of those other municipalities um, to protect our environment and to protect our well-being so I really thank you for um, your leadership in those areas thank you Carl I appreciate that anyone else so one thing the uh, village wide yard sale is this weekend, Saturday, uh, October 15th. Okay, we we'll note that. All right, then I'll ask for motions for the board to go into closed session to seek the advice of council. Second. Discussion, roll call. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Mr. Sharfield? Yes. Mr. Rydesk? Yes. Motion carried. We will not be taking any action. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.